In this video, you're going to learn how to create and publish your first website using Figma Sites. We're gonna look at the fundamentals and teach you everything that you need to know to master this new tool in the shortest amount of time. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside a brand new Figma Sites project. And if you use Figma already, this will feel very familiar. On the center here, we've got the page itself and we've got our breakpoints for responsiveness. On the left-hand side, we've got our web pages navigation and and our layers for the selected page. We also have an insert menu. So we've already got a bunch of pre-built pages, navigations, hero sections, all the sort of blocks if we need to quickly get started. And in the future here too, we'll be able to access the CMS. And if we click on the settings icon here, we can configure all of our site settings across all of our pages. And at the very top of our page, we have a publish button, but let's not press that yet because first we need to build our website. Now it's also important to note that on the right hand side, we can still use all the things that we love about Figma. So textiles, color styles, all that stuff you can find over here. Okay, so just for now, let's go ahead and delete our mobile break point because we'll come back to responsiveness a little bit later on. Now we can start by copying an existing design from another Figma project into Figma sites to quickly get started. But since we're trying to master this tool, let's build it from scratch. Now, even though we can build a Figma site like any other Figma design, What's really important to learn here is frames and auto layouts because this is going to let us create true responsiveness. So let's go ahead and create a new frame on the page by pressing F on my keyboard and I'm just gonna size it up here. We'll call this our hero section and let's actually apply a bit of a background color here as well. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn the width here to be fill content. Now, when we set the width or height of something to be fill content, it's gonna take up as much space as it has available. And the reason we're doing this is so when I make my browser smaller or bigger, it's always gonna take up the full width of my page. Now, this is really important. And if you've already had some experience with auto layout in Figma before, you probably already understand this. But if you haven't, you know that everything kind of has a fixed width and height meaning that size is always gonna stay the same no matter what. But when you're designing for the web, that's actually a problem and we want to determine the size of elements or frames on our page to be relative to the size of the screen. So in this hero section here, we can leave this as a fixed height because we always want it to be a certain height. So let's just set this to be 800 pixels. And inside my desktop breakpoint now, I'm actually going to set the height to be hug contents, meaning it's gonna take up no more space than it needs. And then let's say we duplicated this section here, you notice everything just kind of fits quite nicely. But for now, let's just work on our hero section. So let's go ahead here and let's actually apply a background color. And we can also create this as a color style as well. So let's call this our light gray and we'll create that as a variable. Now, what I'm gonna do is just start designing my sites. We'll worry about adding auto layouts shortly. So let's go ahead here and add some copy. So we'll go for the new age of work and let's just kind of size this to look pretty nice on my page. Maybe this is a little bit too big. So maybe we'll shrink this down a bit to say 110 pixels and let's make this go over three lines. Let's also add a description in here too. So let's change the fonts and the font size because that's gonna be way too big. And let's paste in some copy and let's just tweak our styling. And I want this to kind of sit at the bottom left and then on the bottom right here, I actually want to have a button. So I'm gonna create this as a new frame here. Let's just figure out some sizing. Let's use say a purple color and let's also add that to our library. And then inside this button here, I want to have some text. So we'll say, get started. And what I'm actually going to do is select the layout option to have auto width. So it automatically just calculates the width of my text. So it's flexible. And let's change the background color to be a white. And lastly, let's just draw in an arrow here. And Figma already has all the design capabilities that you know and love built in. So it's really easy to actually build and design your websites. Okay, cool. Now let's take this button for example. So first thing first, let's actually rename this to be called button and let's go ahead and enable some layout options. So I'm gonna set the layout to be horizontal and we're actually going to set the width of this button to be fixed. 
So let's just resize that to where we want it. And let's also set a fixed height as well. So let's make this say a little bit bigger. But what I want is for the content inside my button here to be spaced between as much as it can. So what we'll do is we'll actually align this to the bottom and you notice I can kind of play around and kind of align the positioning here. And then what we'll do is we'll set the gap here, which is the space between our elements here. We can actually set this to be auto. Basically what this means is gonna push everything as far as it can away from each other. Okay, cool. Now let's make our text here a little bit smaller. So let's bring this down to say 16 pixels, maybe a little bit bolder as well. And we also want to add some outer padding. Now you can consider your padding like an inner invisible border within a frame. So if I set the padding on the left and the right to be say 15, and I also set the top and bottom to be 15, you'll kind of notice it's kind of pushed in all of my content by 15 pixels on each side. Now, this is a little bit extreme for me. So let's actually just bring this down to be say 10 pixels and let's re reduce the line height of my text here. So it aligns a little bit better with my arrow. Now you notice because we have layout applied, it doesn't matter how big or how small I make this button, it's always going to keep that size relative and it's going to make everything really clean when designing. So let's just quickly preview this and see how it looks. So you notice we've got our button at the bottom right, we've got some text here. And if I kind of resize this, it's starting to look okay. Now, one of the issues I still do have is we need to actually enable some layout options so we can actually build our site a little bit cleaner for our text here. So what I'm gonna do is select my hero section here. I'm going to set the layout to be vertical, but you'll notice it's broken a few different things. So first let's set our height back. So let's just set that back to be 700 pixels. And you'll notice that we have the gap here set to be really high. So let's just remove that completely for now. Now you'll kind of notice here that no matter what, if I want to try to like drag my button back to the right hand side, it's not going to happen. And that's because we actually have the layout set to vertical. And again, any element that we have layout on, it's going to follow those rules. So to get around this and to put our button back on the right hand side, what I can do is actually create a new frame with my button and the text inside of it. So if I select both of these, right click and go frame selection, then we actually have this grouped together. And then what I could do is set the direction of this frame to be horizontal. And now you notice they go side by side. And since the frame that it's in has layout applied, we could set the width of this to be fill container. And then we can set the gap here to be auto and everything gets pushed as far as it can. We can also set the alignment here to be to the bottom, so the text aligns with the button. And inside my hero section here, we can do the same thing with the gap, where we set the gap to auto, and then everything gets pushed outwards. Now, the reason we've built it like this is so when we design for responsiveness, it's actually going to configure properly. So even though this is a freeform canvas and you can design things however you want, you should really consider how things are built on the web. Because if you build it that way inside of Figma, you're going to save yourself a ton of time and actually build a cleaner website. Now, I'm also going to drag and drop in an image here and I kind of want to fill this empty space that we have here. So let's grab this image and let's actually put it inside our hero section, but you will notice we're kind of restricted yet again to the rules of our layout. Now, if we select that image and if we go to position and if we set the positioning type to be absolute, you'll notice that even though it's inside this hero section with layouts applied, we can actually kind of control it however we want. Now, imagine you're kind of sitting at a kitchen table and there was a lots of seats around you. You pick up your chair and you move your spot. It affects only you, but nobody else around you. This is essentially how absolute positioning works. So I can move this element to be wherever I want. It's still contained inside my hero section, but it's not affecting the layout of others. So let's actually go ahead here and say, make it a little bit bigger. And we can also set how we pin this to my hero section as well. So say I wanted it to be pinned to the right hand side. I could just click on the right here, pin it to the right. And let's say it's always gonna be a hundred pixels from the right. And then maybe from the top, it's going to be 50 pixels from the top. So then you'll notice when I preview this and if I kind of drag this out, 
it's always going to stay in that position. Now, maybe I want it to be a little bit more centered on my page. So if I just double click this center here, preview that, you notice that Figma will automatically try to keep it as centered as possible. Let's go ahead and really scale this up now for effect. Now, inside of Figma, we can also use components just like any other component inside of Figma. But you'll notice if I kind of right click this frame here, I actually can't create it as a component. And that's because it's already living on the page. But what I could do is actually copy this. I'm gonna paste it to be off the canvas. So let's just paste it here. And then I can right click and create as a component. Now, like I mentioned, components work the exact same way as they do in Figma. So now if I just remove this button here, and if I go to my insert menu, go to libraries, I can actually view that component here and drag and drop it onto my page. And now this is global. So anytime I make say an update to this button, it's gonna update everywhere else on my site. We can also add variants for buttons as well. So for example, if I select this button here and add say a variance, we could design a completely different state. So let's actually go ahead here and do this now. And I'm actually gonna make it that it's going to be a darker purple and we can add a radius of say four. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I actually can design a bit more custom interactivity using components. So let's go ahead here and call this the default state and call our variant to the hover state. Now, what I could do is make it when I hover on this default state, it's actually gonna change to this hover state. So to do this, I'm gonna select the default state. I'm gonna go to interaction and we're gonna click on interactions here and we're going to select change to. And we're gonna make it that on hover, we're going to change to a different variant, which is going to be our hover. And we're gonna select animate to be smart animate. So now when we actually preview our website, you notice when I hover on my button, it actually plays a cool effect. And this is how we can actually create more advanced animations in Figma. Now out of the box too, Figma does have some basic interactions that you can use. So for example here, if I select my text, go to interaction, I can set an interaction here. So we might wanna make a reveal effect. So let's make it that when the page loads, it's going to slide in from the bottom and I can always configure how this looks as well. So let's just change the positioning here. And then you notice when I preview this and keep reloading the page, it'll fade in on load. There's a ton of different interactions that we can add here from scroll parallax to custom cursors to even playing a specific animation. So just like everything in design tools, the best way to learn is just to play. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our site responsive. So on our page here, what we can do is actually click this little plus and we can create a tablet breakpoint. Now, when we refer to breakpoints, we're essentially talking about changing the layout of the page based on the screen size. So in this case, the smaller the screen gets, once it reaches a certain width, we then want to change the layout. And then all I need to do is kind of just tweak my design and update it so it matches that breakpoint. So maybe in this instance, we wanna move this across a little bit. And then let's also go ahead here and add a mobile breakpoint for phone. And you'll notice we have to kind of just resize some of our text here. Now you can also use textiles to automatically do this across breakpoints as well. So let's size this down. Maybe it can be a little bit bigger. Let's say it's gonna be 68 pixels. And let's set the width here just to be fill container. Let's keep the layout here, but let's actually align it to the left. And then my text here, we wanna set the width to be fill container as well, so it doesn't overflow. And then let's also find our image here and make sure it sits in a nice spot. And maybe on mobile too, we want the height to be a little taller since it's actually on a mobile screen. And we can select that mobile breakpoint and we can set the height to be hug content so it automatically fits. So now when we actually preview our website, you notice when I make the screen say smaller, the layout's going to change based on the screen size. Now, obviously this isn't 100% perfect, but if we spend a little bit more time tweaking this, we'll get it just right. You can also add a custom breakpoint. So if you are working for larger screens or in between screens, you can do that. But to be honest, it's probably a little bit overkill, but again, depends on what you're trying to build. Now, if I go to my site settings here, we can configure the site settings for the entire website or a specific page. So this will be really good for our SEO. So I can give it a site title. So we'll go my first project. 
We can give it a site description. We can set a default language. We can even enable a Google Analytics ID for tracking. If you do have any custom code, so maybe you want to install a chatbot, you can actually put that in here as well. Then the last thing you need to do is publish your site. So we can click on publish here and you'll notice it will generate a .figma.site domain and we can just publish that like so. And now you'll see we have a published site on the internet. And that's everything you need to know to get started with Figma sites. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. Now we actually create a ton of Framer content here on the channel. So if you're interested in learning Framer too, consider subscribing because we put out new content every single week. I'll also include some relevant links down below to help you on your building journey. But until next time, I'll catch you later.